Hey guys, it's me, Kisame Unlimited. And Spidey. And this has been one of the most viewed videos on this channel for a very long time, and it is my top 25 rarest cards in my and collection. It's been highly demanded that you do another one. That I do an show. update on it. Sadly, I'm going to state this right now. I have gotten a few new cards to my collection, but not a crazy amount, but I've gotten a noticeably different top 25 now so if you're interested to see my top get, 25 we're gonna get on into that yeah and if you're also interested in his other he also owns other rare cards that may not have made it in this video it is called the extremely rare cards edition go to our channel archives and check out that segment we see a lot of rare cards if you're into that and also if you would like to see me continue showing more and more rare cards Take the time out of your day to click the like button. It's greatly appreciated. And maybe you'll do one next year. Yeah, because I would like to do these and update these every year. But I basically judge a lot of my videos based off like how much views they get and how many likes that they get. So if this video gets a lot of likes, I will continue doing it. So I'm roughly hoping that you guys can get it up to around 800 likes. That would honestly make my day. So click that like button. Mark number 25 is my Bandai four-piece set of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. This is a set that most people don't even know it exists. This set is called uh, the Bandai set of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. These cards are from 1998. Most people don't even know that these even exist. That's why I get a lot of comments. They're fake! You know, I've never seen a card that looks like this. <laughs> it makes no sense. So, but if you do your research, you could re you could find out these cards exist on eBay. They existed back in the day before the game was released over here in the TCG. But this card roughly goes, well, these cards roughly go for around, I want to say like $35 to to get this set, it's like around $35. My number 24 is another Bandai card. I have a few Bandai cards first. It is the Red Eyes Black Dragon. The Red Eyes Black Dragon was actually one of my very, very favorite ones to get out of the set because it has such a unique uh, take on Red Eyes' art. He has 2400 attack and 2400 defense. Yet again, people are like, what? I never. <laughs> but in actuality, he had a weird attack and defense point swap. And, um back in the day in the Bandai years. But also, another thing I didn't say with the other Bandai is that these are what Bandai cards' backs look like. They Your look... shit looks so fake. <laughs> well, like I said, if you think that they're fake, go on eBay or go and look up on Wikipedia and then you'll get the facts where they're at. <laughs> Why don't you look up a card shop and you see that shit is fake? Well, you know, these cards were released in Japan. You would have to go in Japan, like, and get these cards. All right, okay, scrub face. All right, go back to scrubbling. <laughs> like... <laughs> My number 23rd spot goes to my, uh, another thing of Bandai cards, it's my Bandai Blue Eyes White Dragon English version and the Bandai Blue Eyes Japanese version. When they made the Bandai set, there was 118 cards except for the movie promos, which I think were like three or four more. The English one was the last one and the first one was the Japanese one. Oh my god, do you own any English Yu-Gi-Oh cards? What, what the fuck is this video? Well, you know the funny... Are we going to see any real cards at this point in this video? Well, we're going to get to them. But... Okay. okay. <laughs> but you want to know something? In the game, in actuality, you know, a lot of cards that are really priced highly over here in the TCG are just cards that just get reprinted and lose all their value. In Japan, a lot of these cards were ancient old cards and still retail, like, retail a lot of value. Like the Red Eyes goes for around $38, $40. The Blue Eyes goes for around $45 if they are in good condition. Mine are both are in really good condition, especially my Japanese Blue Eyes here, this one. But they are both around, I would like to say $45 each, and they're not easy to come across. Then my 22nd rarest card is a three-card set, which is the Duelist Kingdom cards. Now, these cards, yet again, Japanese. You they, got that prize money card that's worth like $50,000, yeah. man. Mad respect. <laughs> but the thing is... Get wrecked as a count. <laughs> but these cards were reprinted in the TCG not that long ago as Hollows, but these cards are pretty hard to come by, and these cards, roughly, if you wanted to buy the whole set from the Japanese versions, they're roughly, to get all of them together in good condition, it's roughly around $50. Because these are the OG originals. These aren't the, you know, the spin-off new ones that you can get for probably a dollar. Number 21 is is get your game on this is a card that i actually Finally, english 
I, this is funny because this was the first card that I actually haven't showcased in the Extremely Rare Cards Edition yet. This card roughly goes for around $50 plus dollars to roughly $50, $55, $60. It is basically, uh, it was a card I think basically just to promote Jaden and GX around that time frame because it was around 2007. It's a fact is you can only play this card if you were present at the 2007 Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card World Championships. While well, we all know I wasn't there. <laughs> the attack of all your elemental hero and Neospatian monsters on the field are doubled. Number 20 is my 1998 Asian uh, Magician of Black Chaos. Yeah, there was a 1998 tournament in Asia and these cards were given out as attendee cards that were given to anyone that were able to get into the event. These cards, how you know they're authentic is, you know how every Yu-Gi-Oh card has a silver box? You know, his does not, he doesn't have a silver box. That's what tells him apart from the rest that you know he's a prize card from that event. Um, he roughly, because he's an attendee prize card for just being at the event, he's roughly always held his value around being $60. But he also came out with another card at the same time as an attendee prize card. And that is number 19, which is Gate Guardian. Gate Guardian was the card that went side by side with Magician of Black Chaos. Most of the time, people are not going to realize these cards' true values from just seeing them here. So if you have any interest to in knowing more about these two cards, if you go on Wikipedia and look up 1998 Asian Tournament, I'm pretty sure you'll find these, and I know it's on Wikipedia because I've seen it many times. And these are both exclusive attendee cards to the event. So if you want to know more about these origins, I would look on Wikipedia. But they are authentic and they are real. My number 18 is Chimera, the Master of Beasts. Now, Chimera was the first match winner that I ever got into my collection. Chimera will probably always be one of my favorites. But Chimera, because he was mainly just given out in Germany... And Chimera holds his value. He still holds his value today as being like a $60 prize card. And he was given out, in my knowledge, in 2008. Yep, he was given out in 2008. And yeah, he's always been $60. So he's, and uh, he always held his value as $60. Now, this is uh, kind of a funny one because this is my number 17, 16, and 15 spots. My sign tokens from Kaiba. Pegasus and Joey. They all roughly hold their value as $80 cards. Not just because they're the signatures from the original voice actors, but they also hold their values as being exclusive tokens that were only given out in, I'm pretty sure in the 2012, yeah, in the 2012 Nationals. So these cards were really sought after, and you probably can't even find them on eBay. I know that they also have one on Yusei that I'm pretty sure they have on eBay right now, which I do have my eye on. I just don't have the money to really go out and just waste it on them. But like I said before, these are their signatures of the original voice actors of Eric Stewart, Darren Dunstan, I'm pretty sure is his name, and Wayne Grayson. So th that holds my spot as number 17, 16, and 15. I don't have any specific order because they all hold the same value as being roughly cards that are around $80. My number 14 is my Trihorn Dragon from the 1998 Asian Tournament that the same one that my Magician in Black Chaos is from and my Gate Guardian, except... This was the first round prize card. Anyone that was able to get past, um, I think, the first round got this. Now, they have a round two, three, and the final round, but they are really sought after and way more expensive. But knowing that I was able to walk away with Trihorn Dragon out of all of them, which was a very nice feeling, and I like how I have like the set of three. The Trihorn Dragon from the 1998 Asian Tournament goes for roughly around $100. Like I said before, you could tell that they're authentic by them not having the silver box in the corner. So there you go. Number 13 goes to Cannon the Sword Mistress. Cannon the Sword Mistress, it was the first world uh, prize card from the, w uh, the WCS series. And she was, like, from the World Championship Series. She was given out in many spots in Madison Square Garden and Toys of Ross. There's been many tournaments that were given, or, given her away. She's always held her spot at 100, 150 if she was factory sealed. Mine is sadly not factory sealed. You can tell she's Asian English in the back. 
But yeah, she's always holding her value around being a $100 prize card for being the super rare copy. You can see, like, it says age, like, it says uh, the World Championship Series is where she's from. And like I said before, she holds my spot as my number 13. My number 12 is my DM Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is a newer card to add to my collection. They were made very long way before, even before the Bandai cards came out. These cards were like the first prints of the cards that we were going to be getting here. You could tell how different they look from regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> They're fake. Well, like I said... Yo, what the fuck? That's so fake. Now, Where'd but... you get that? God off eBay. But if you want... But, you know, but honestly, Evan, I thank you for saying that because if I don't explain the reasons, people actually are there with their comments claiming my cards are fake. Yes, so, I want you to so if you that want. Looks fake as hell. Well, if you would like to know where the DM Blue Eyes is from, if you look on eBay or on Wikipedia, there was a monster capsule set of Yu Gi Oh cards. I'm pretty sure they were given out as video game like things, like, oh, if you got a video game, you got the cards besides them. But there were like two waves. One wave has like. Dark Magician, Summon Skull, like, I think, like, Black Skull Dragon. But then there was another set which had cards such as called Batty, which is a card that I've always sought after. Haven't seen them in over a year. I only saw one listing where someone sold Batty. But the Blue Eyes White Dragon was a very sought-after one in that collection, and I'm pretty sure it was from the first set of the DM1 cards. I only saw it three times on eBay. The second time I saw it, I snagged it, which is this one. The third one I was trying to get, but I thought my friend Reggie was going to pick it up and didn't. But if I, if he didn't, I would have picked it up. And apparently I wasn't, so if I wasn't able to... If you want to know more information, we have a video about you when you acquired the card. So go to our archives and check it out. But like I said, if you want to go on Wikipedia and look up the DM Yu-Gi-Oh set, you'll find this card there. So just so you know, it's authentic. Alright, number 11... Oh, and also, this card roughly goes for around the price tag of $150. That's, whoa. Yeah. For a fake card? Well, fun fact, I got it for 75 Number 11 is my Testament of the Arcane Lords. Testament of the Arcane Lords is probably one of the very first cards I have ever blown a large amount of money on. Testament holds her value as being around 200 I got When I first got into collecting these cards, she was around 250 She's always been a very hard card to be sought after because not many people have her. She's Asian English. She's factory sealed my copy. But yeah, she's roughly around 200 She's one of the um, replica match winners. The thing that I don't know if most people know is, if you're new to the channel, there are three really big collections in Yu-Gi-Oh! which have a lot of value. One is the... SJC cards, which are like Cyberstein, Death Volscalf, Dark End Dragon. There's the others, which are the YCS prize cards. And then there are the replica match winners. And they make one each year. The replica match winners have been the collection that I have have sought out as being a Yu-Gi-Oh! collector. And she was probably the first one that I bought that was expensive. She was the one I bought after Chimera. But yeah, this card is roughly around 200 at my number 11 spot. So now we're hitting my top 10 rarest cards in my collection. The number 10 spot is Agiba the Malevolent Shinsho. Uh, Agiba, I honestly still to this day, I have overpriced. I have paid a little too much for this card. I paid 250 for him when, he first, when I first saw him. When in actuality, he's always been around. Uh, he's roughly been like 200 plus. Especially mine's factory sealed, Asian English. This card is, like I said, held its value as being a roughly more than $200 card, but unless you snagged it on earlier points in time where you got it on bidding or people that just honestly didn't want to collect these cards anymore. But yeah, roughly in actuality, on a good day, this card sells for around $200+. Plus. My number nine spot goes to my World Championships Ciaru. Ciaru, this is a super rare. They have made reprints of this card. But this is the original Super Rare from the World Championship set. This one is Asian English and Factory Sealed. So when you see yours from the DDS set or a common one, you know, this is much different. So that people understand. Because a lot of people just see that I hold a card like this and be like, I have one. So that means I have a lot of money. In actuality, sadly, no. This card has a high amount of value because it's a World Championship card that should have been King of Destruction Zizex but wasn't, and we got this instead. But this card has always held its value of roughly around being 220 
but yeah, it's been fluctuating lately, but it's natural price is 220 to 250. So I'm gonna put this card down and we're gonna get into my number eight. My number eight is my Bandai Gate Guardian. This is the rarest Bandai card I have, because remember when I said earlier in the video that there were some movie promos of the Bandai cards? Well, they were three. There was Gate Guardian, Swords of Revealing Light, and Mirror Force. Gate Guardian was the easier one to come across, but Gate Guardian is still not cheap in any which way. Gate Guardian has roughly held its value as being around... This is a card sleeve, not the back, because Bandai's have different backs. But this card has always held its value of being around $300. Um, the Gate Guardian is a one card version, like all together, and it's treated as a magic card for some odd reason in the band I said, I don't know why. But Gate Guardian has held his value as 300 even since the last video I made. So he hits my number eight spot. Number seven is my Twin Kings Founders of the Empire. This was the card that Mike got me for my birthday, I presume, I'm pretty sure. And Yama got me this card for that day. This card roughly holds its value as being a $400 Yu-Gi-Oh card with the Asian English. Actually, no, around this time frame, they started making the, uh, the replica match winners actually have the normal English background that we have. So this is when this started. You got the first real card you showed all video. Shut up. Because you, you don't know how gullible they are. They're so gullible. They're like, I oh, see that he's right. <laughs> I know that they would do that. But like I said, do your research, people. if you want to know if any of these cards are real, all you really need to do is just go out of your way to do research. If you just want to speculate and just say cards are fake because I paid a lot of money for these cards and I wouldn't invest in cards that were not real. My number sixth is my Blood Mephist Super Rare. Um, I always wanted to get one of the higher-end Ultra Rares of the YCS prize cards, and I'll probably get that maybe during the next time I do this update. But for now, I just have the Blood Mephist Super Rare, which is still an awesome thing to my collection. I'm very happy to have it. Um, the Blood Mephist has honestly always held its value around being 350 to 450 but I'll roughly say it's around 400 plus is where it should be if sold by a real collector to anyone. Because if you just have this card and you just want to say, like, just or on a whim get rid of it, you could obviously get much less than what the card's actually worth. But this card has always held its value as being a 400 plus Yu-Gi-Oh card. So, yeah, this is Blood Mephist hitting number six. All right, now, number five is... Grandopolis, the Eternal Golden City. Uh, Grandopolis was the year of 2014 given out because in 2013 in Las Vegas, uh, Grandopolis was announced. This card has always held its value as being more than $425, so I hold it a little bit more valuable than I do Blood Mephist. But yeah, it hits number five on the list and he's around $425 on a good day. My number four goes to... Nope. 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 It's this. King Landia the Gold Fang. King Landia the Gold Fang has gone up in price as time went on. Grand, uh, King Landia the Gold Fang came out in 2012. This car was very brushed under the rug, and many people in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community doesn't, don't even know that this card even exists, because a lot of the times mats were made for cards such as Grandopolis and the Twin Kings Foundress of the Empire and Legendary Dragon of Light and all the others, but King Landia the Gold Fang was pretty shoved underneath the rug. So many people don't even know this card exists. This card could roughly go for around $600 on a good day. Mine is not sadly factory sealed, but it is real Asian English. You know, they're all Asian English. Well, that's Blood Memphis, but you see, Asian English. And this card I picked up, uh, I'm pretty sure like two years ago, but this card has done nothing but go up in price. And it's an awesome, cool, super rare and it is roughly, like I said before, it's around $600. Like, And these prices are based off now. These prices are based off right now as of December 23rd, 2015. So if you're watching this video in 2018 or 2019, it'd be like, whoa. Well, 2012, <laughs> Yeah, or you go fucking watching this video from the past. No, sadly, you're wrong, sir. These cards had different price tags and price ranges around this time frame. My number three is... 
It's you. Number three is Tyr the Vanquishing Warlord. Tyr I actually and honestly picked up along with uh, King Landy of the Goldfang, but Tyr has always held its value as being much more sought after in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Uh, Tyr the Vanquishing Warlord was released in 2009. It was the third prize card of the replicas to come out. Because it was first Testament, then Chimera, then Tyr. But Tyr was on a whole other playing ground, because Tyr was always around 600 flat. King Landia has been going up to 600, but kind of just hit that peak. But that's its peak of its price range. Tyr, on the other hand, has always held its value as 600 flat, if not more. So Tyr has always held his price tag as being very, very sought after. And even in my last top 25, he was very high up on there already. So, yeah. Tier is number three. Now we're hitting the last two cards on my top 25 list. My number two spot goes to Legendary Dragon of White. Now this card I have to state out right now. A lot of people think that this card, everybody has it. I have the original Super Rare. The Super Rare which came out from the World Championship set. My card is from the 2013 Dash like AE003 set. Which is from the 2013 championship set which were given out as prize cards as super rare replicas these were before the pack that came out with legendary magician of dark and legendary dragon of white the reprints the like because these are the first wave of reprints then the one that came out in the pack was to everybody but this card roughly goes for around a thousand dollars roughly around 900 to a thousand dollars for this card I picked it up when it was around 400, but now it's around 900 to 1,000. Like I said, if you wanted to research about this card, there are around 70 copies of this card around the world, so there are not many out there, and these are really sought after. But yeah, this card is not easy to come across in the slightest, so just that so you guys know. And my number one rarest card is the same one that it was in my top 25 of last year. And that is my Stardust Divinity. Stardust Divinity is the rarest Yu-Gi-Oh card that I have. Stardust Divinity came out in 2011 when the hurricane or and the tsunami hit uh, Japan and really like fucked up the attendance at the 2011 World Championship. Some of these were destroyed. And there is on record only 50 copies of this card in the whole world. And I have one. This card has always held its value, being around more than 1200 but it's roughly right now as a price range of 1500 to $2,000. This card has always held its high value and has always been my rarest card that I've always held. And that's probably everything I could say. So for now, until next time, Stardust Divinity is still the rarest card in my collection so far okay so thank you guys for watching that was basically my top 25 rarest cards in the game one little fun fact is after i was done doing it and i counted up all the prices my Yu-Gi-Oh card collection those top 25 cards added up together on a good day sold on a good day it came out to six thousand eight hundred dollars my Yu-Gi-Oh collection roughly almost goes for seven thousand dollars i feel like if you want a good hobby it's very fun you just have to sit down and decide what you want to start collecting because there's misprints, there's sign cards, there's the Shonen Jumps, there's the Replica Match Winners, there's the YCSs, and they're just cards that are just interesting out there. And they're just old cards. There's just so many nice cards out there. But if you're interested in collecting like I am, it's just very fun and I wish you a lot of luck. So like, comment, subscribe, comment below how you feel about my collection. I feel like it's fake. I'm, not, I'm just expecting to get a whole bunch of mean comments, but you want to know in actuality they're real, so everyone can else suck it. Because if I was going to fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards and show, oh, my best card is Stardust Divinity, if I was going to fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I'd be like, I got Cyberstein, I got his, you know, King of Destruction's ex. Yeah. Look at me. No, yeah, I wouldn't fake a $50 card. Yeah, why would I fake a $50 card? You're gonna card. fake something, why don't you go big? I would go <laughs> like, oh, I got King of Destruction's his ex. Oh, I can't believe it. Only me. Only me has. But no, that's all these cards are legit. Thanks for watching. Everyone that enjoyed this video, thank you. Have a great day. I really need one. But first, let me take a selfie.
everyone should go with XX Pro or Valencia. I want to look tan. What should my caption be? I want it to be clever. How about living with my bitches, hashtag live. I only got 10 likes in the last five minutes. 